The following is a presentation of the United Wrestling Network. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting edition of Championship Wrestling presented by Pro Shingle. I am Dustin Starr alongside my lovely Maria. Thanks for joining us today as we gear up for Christmas in just a matter of days, but you know, we're also gearing up for another big day happening next week, and that's the Championship Wrestling from Hollywood 500th episode Spectacular. I guess you could say things are getting pretty serious. The two-week blockbuster event starts next week, but today, the Dave and Buster's Match of the Week, we're gonna find out who the new number one contenders for the United World Tag Team titles are when four minutes of heat face off against the Friendship. Last week, Ray Rosas, you crossed the line. I warned you to keep your distance. There was real change coming to championship wrestling and you have set progress back by weeks. Pay attention. You want a war? You don't know what you're getting yourself into. On the 500th episode of Championship Wrestling, we end this six-man tag match on sanctioned. And I'm not even going to bother making a challenge because I know you'll be there. And we are going to show you the new normal and shove it down your throat. Was that are we back we're back I, I think we were hacked by socal distancing somehow back on track here what was i saying along with that ever important number one contenders match we'll also hear from the team of ruby rays and cc chanel i'm sure jamie ivine's going to be involved as well the stakes are at an all-time high for them next week and we'll run down the full card in just a bit but first we're kicking things off with our heritage championship match oh yeah jordan clearwater defends the heritage championship against the main event will all damn day watch your mouth big opportunity for will all day heritage title on the line i mean will all day a champion in his own right is the reality of wrestling texas champion that title not up for grabs but what a way to kick off this episode guys it's a main event anywhere absolutely and i have a feeling that will all day well he might be focused on more than just his ring entrance on this event There you see the Heritage Champion, the Golden Boy, Jordan Clearwater, living up to that moniker as the new Heritage Champion. But again, Blake, there was controversy when he won the title. SoCal distancing involved all kinds of moving parts. So I think Clearwater really is looking for this opportunity to prove that it was no fluke, that he is the rightful champion. Yeah, that belt looks like it belongs around Jordan Clearwater's waist. He might not have had the most legitimate win, but he had no hand in the cheapness in that what it was. And I think tonight on this program, we're going to see him prove that that belt belongs around his waist. Oh boy, certainly looking to prove that he's a fighting champion, defends the title. If he wins, he'll defend it again next week against his nemesis, Richie Slade. Yeah, no rest for the champion, Jordan, looking to prove that that belt is going nowhere. Here to set the stage for our opening title contest, Adnan Qureshi, take it away. Just like last time. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the Hollywood Heritage Championship. Introducing hey, first. Hey, don't screw this up. Introducing oh, first, massive. the challenger from Houston, Texas. He is the main event 
all damn day, Will, all day. Is that going to suffice? Coaching yet again. I thought he hit it perfectly. That's usually it's, it's usually exactly what he asked for. Let's Introducing the challenger from Houston, Texas, Mr. Impossible. More enthusiasm. More enthusiasm. Come on, what's going on here? Get this started. Man, we have we have a title match to get to. And, and this is and now you see Clearwater getting hot under the collar, guys. Yeah. This is disrespectful. I, I, Making the champion wait. I spoke too soon when I thought that Will All Day wouldn't be so wrapped up in this. Hey, I got all day. I'll be honest, I'd like to see Jordan Clearwater so break his jaw so that gets wired shut. Introducing the challenger <laughs> from Houston, Texas, Mr. Impossible, the main event, all damn day, Will, all day. That's right, that's better. All right, that time I guess that suffice. He did it one more time with feeling. So and introducing his opponent. Weighing in at 220 pounds, he is the Hollywood Heritage Champion, the Golden Boy, Jordan Clearwater. It's my guy right there, TK. Looks confident. He has every reason to be. He is very, very prepared. And here we see referee Allison Lee showing us what it's all about. The Hollywood Heritage Championship. What an incredible title that's been all the way back to 2006. You know, the likes of right, Rocky good. Romero, Scrap Iron, Adam Pierce, Russ Taylor, Scorpio Sky, Willie Mack. Many have held that acclaimed title throughout the ages here as we celebrate next week, 500 episodes. And the, Hollywood, the Heritage title has been at the forefront and in many main events. Yeah, and I think to Blake's point, it looks great around the waist of Jordan Clearwater, but he has a tough task in we Will Alden. Well, he's doing a fantastic job of staying attached to Jordan Clearwater's head. Jordan is the bigger, oh, pin attempt. Jordan is the bigger, stronger, more technical grappler, and I even think he's got better striking. So I'm really interested to see how Will Alday plans on dealing with this bigger, stronger, more technical opponent in Jordan Clearwater. Oh, nice leverage there on the side headlock, headlock trying to ground Clearwater, the champion. Clearwater shrugs him off. Shoulder block and backs up Will all day. Again, the reality of wrestling, Texas champion. Champion versus champion, but it's only the heritage title that's on the line. Leg kick, misdirection play there by all day. Flying shoulder block and takes down Clearwater. Man, explosive strike there by Will all day. Showing his athleticism now. Nice arm drag takedown and another no, sir. Not so fast. Yeah. Jordan Clearwater put a stop to that. Tried one of his own, though. Will all day, though, says, I'll get you that time. You know what's interesting, guys? And, and you can't, you can't say, even though there was controversy when he won the title, Clearwater a fighting champion, putting the title on the line against Will all day, if he successfully defends, again puts the title on the line next week, episode 500, against Richie Slade. So ironically, you got to think that Slade is actually rooting for Clearwater to win this matchup. That is sort of an interesting uh, turn of fortunes there, that the two rivals, or the rather that Slade would be rooting for his rival in Clearwater. Feels him out of the corner. Now, Blake, I know he's your guy. I know he's confident. I know the training. But is he prepared, potentially, and again, and it's a big if, because he's got to get past all day, and that's a tough in its own right. Is Clearwater ready for back-to-back -back title matches as all day crashes and burns? I have been helping prepare Jordan Clearwater to be ready for any and every obstacle in his path to get that belt and to keep it. Clearwater on the hunt, just stalking the challenger like he's Jason Voorhees and Camp Crystal Lake takes him in to the apron. And man, oh man, is Will all day on wobbly legs here. Look out here, look at the strength of the champion and sends him back in. He wants to beat him in the middle. Incredible power from Clearwater. The golden boy showing that that heritage championship belongs firmly around his waist. Shows the integrity too. He wants to prove that he's a rightful champion. He wants to pin him in the middle. There we go, Springboard, big shot by the challenger. The challenger in control. We'll be back with more right after this.
Need a quick roof repair, maybe five, 10, 15 shingles? Pro Shingles' new speedy shingle service is just what you need. It's quick, fast, and speedy. They can help with even the smallest roofing repairs. Call Pro Shingle now, 901-258-6503. You have to put good things in to get great barbecue out. And no one in Memphis takes more care than Tops. Our master cooks grill the old-fashioned way. Slow, with constant attention in an open pit. See, that's real hickory smoke for even more flavor. From shoulder to ribs or brisket to one of our world-famous burgers, you'll love Tops because we do it right. Real barbecue always has been and always will be. Tops, come get you some barbecue. Last week on Championship Wrestling, Heather Monroe and Austin Body prepared for their big showdown. As you know, we have a match against CC Chanel and Ruby Rays, and they are trying to take away our women's belt, the belt that we worked so hard to create. But we are not going to let that happen, are we? No. Are you ready? Yes. I ask again. Are you ready? Yes! Let's do this. <clears throat> and the Bodega didn't want to wait for their United World Tag Team title match. Tell Nico, you know what I'm saying, that we here, we ain't trying to wait for the 500th episode. No. We don't want the fireworks or the blockbuster event. No. We want our tag team championship shots today. Yeah, I mean, it sounds fun to me. All right, yeah, no, he, he says yes. I mean, All right, good, I... shut up, good. You tell SoCal Distancing that the street tax is due, and we're gonna collect with them belts. The, the light's completely out here, guys. It's Ray Rosas! And he's all over Kubrick! He is lighting them both up! What a super kick from Ray Rosas! He is giving SoCal Distancing a taste of their own medicine. And watch out, Danny Limelight, don't turn around, you're not gonna like the view. Look out here! Slice Boogie, whose side is he on? He's got the crowbar! What a shot to Andy Brown! Didn't see any of the shenanigans! History made! All that and so much more on the fastest hour in pro wrestling. Watch episode 89 in full on our official YouTube channel at CW30 Wrestling. Welcome back, everyone. What a shot there by Will all day to a grounded champion. Before the break, we saw that big springboard kick and lethal kicks continue. History to be made again. Nope, not yet. And Will all day feverishly looking to get the advantage here. Yeah, I thought that when Jordan Clearwater just powered Will all day back into the ring, that that was going to turn the tide of the matchup. That Jordan Clearwater was going to stay in control, but Will all day nicks that, and now it's been all all day. Well, he's not going unless he wants to. Blocks the Irish whip attempt. Does the champion? And I'll tell you, Blake. Uh, Clearwater looking very strong. But the speed is a factor he's gonna have to deal with. We see it there with the head scissors takedown. Yeah, he's a lot bigger, stronger, faster than Will all day. But the X factor that Will has is this agility, his ability to chain together multiple attacks and these jumping flying attacks, just like that one, have continued to land successfully for Will all day. Beautiful flying forearm there by Will all day. Again, we saw Will all day impressive victory over Snipes, who's a great athlete. And Will all day wrestled is in Memphis as part of the big championship wrestling event back on uh, Halloween as well. He's been stringing together the victories. And if he goes up top, he might be looking for that stamp of approval, guys. That big swanton. We might see championship history made again. Looking for it, no. Calls the audible. Clearwater able to escape there, and now he is following up. Clearwater turning the tide back in his favor right now. We might be seeing a Midas touch here in a second. Left leg hospital, right leg cemetery. Come on, my man, Jordan, you got this. Oh, man, Bulletproof is getting fired up <laughs> he here. I'm getting excited, I'll, it's I'll, my guy. I'll give you a pass on being, uh, on being uh, you know, unbiased. You got it, you're supposed to be, but here we go. Neck breaker, there, that's another one of his signatures. High impact move there by the champion, but Will All Day continues to fight on. He's fighting on, but he is uh, not quite maybe having the same amount of starch as he did a moment ago after that neck breaker. Jordan Clearwater, you know, he's going to be looking to hit that Midas touch maybe any moment now. You can sort of see him thinking about it. Is he going to measure him here soon? Clearwater, though, wincing in pain, 
as well here, but he's got the power to hoist him up. But very elusive is the challenger Will all day. And catches him with the spine buster into the cover. Man, tried to make a, a quick uh, transition into the cover. Double stomp. Relentless. Yeah, he sure is. Looking to become the champion is Will all day. And Will all day has got deceptive power as well. He can really do it all. These are some big attacks, but he just doesn't have the weight behind this power. It's not like you got a Pop Oesco landing on you after that big sidewalk slam. And I think that's why we're not seeing as much damage out of these attacks as we might typically see out of some other competitors. That's where that size and strength advantage comes to the benefit of the champion, allows him to kick out of this flurry of offense. I mean, fireworks show grand finale type stuff by Will all day. Yeah, and you saw, I mean, the look in his eyes. He was he was sort of sizing up Jordan. What do I have to do to put him away? And he went back again to the top rope. Neither time has it paid off for Will all day. Will all day is trying to figure out what he can do that's a big impact attack. Keep Jordan Clearwater down. He's hit him with big slams, big kicks. He needs to do something even bigger, like going to the top rope. Right Third here. time might be big. the charm. Drop kick, caught him. Clearwater could be out. Quickly into the cover, sense of urgency, new champ on the way. Close call says Allison Lee after that missile drop kick. Man, I'm Jordan Clearwater's got a chin on him. I've taken him to sparring and trooped him upside the head multiple times, and that kid keeps on standing, so I'm not surprised. Uh, I, I hope you taught him how to defend a flying knee. I'm gonna put his ass to sleep. I don't oh, think wow. so. Oh. I don't think so, Will. Oh. Get up. Get up. Well, all day on a mission here, just telling our broadcast colleague and the trainer of Clearwater that he's gonna put Clearwater to sleep. Nobody home for the autograph. The pen didn't have any ink in it, gentlemen. He'd sign a yeah, lot of autographs if he'd come Heritage Champion. Yeah, Clearwater missed that Midas touch. Submission here though, maybe. A, oh, a Jordan Clearwater, look at that strength holding on. This is incredible power. Oh, and deposits him right into the top turnbuckle. But man, that might, might have put a lot of strain on that elbow that already looked like it was bothering him earlier in the match, Blake. Yeah, he was trying to look for that Midas touch in the corner. Oh, beautiful lariat by Jordan Clearwater. Turns Will all day inside out. Absolutely helicoptered all day there. And now this is not this is not where you want to be for Will all day when you get when you're corner to corner from the Golden Boy where he can measure you. Oh, here it comes. And he looks like he's warming up the the right leg, and you know what that means. Clearwater. Oh wait, wait, my no, God! No, 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 no! Oh, beef candy out there, and, and Clearwater can't touch him. He can't touch him. If he does, he won't get his hands on him at episode 500. And this, oh man, the kick, the kiss, the kiss. Good night. Autograph coming. No. Another big shot, and the champion is rocked here and distracted. Here we go, springboard it right oh. into the Midas touch. Bang a rang, all day's gotta be out. One, On two, money. three. There it is. Here is your winner, and wow. still Hollywood Heritage Champion, Jordan Clearwater. What an incredible matchup. What is Beef Candy doing out there? Will All Day tried to take advantage and then springboards in. He got caught by the Midas touch. Call the cemetery, get a plot, because the title aspirations of Will All Day just got buried. Next week, episode 500, let the celebration begin. And more still to come, guys. Again, we're just getting started. Welcome back to the studio. Beef Candy! You're so annoying. You're <laughs> faves. It's my faves. And they better look out for the Midas Touch. Big win for Jordan Clearwater. How's my hair, by the way? Beef Candy, they're watching, you know. Mm. More action Good. on the other side of the break. Plus, we'll hear from all parties involved in the upcoming Interdinner Tag Team match that determines if, if we sanction a women's division championship. Don't go away. I think you've shown progress in your last few sessions. And it's time for a second chance. People ask what you do for a living so they can gauge how much respect to give you. Society equates wealth to power. Those who have the gold may have the power. But those who have the power are only one guillotine away from non-existence. Now, have you been naughty or nice? Well, if you've been naughty, come sit by me, darling. Don't go away. Hey, friends.
friends, be sure to shop local with us this Christmas season. Remember, we have over 100 local vendors, so you're sure to find a gift for everyone. Come see us at Commerce Street Market. Mississippi's favorite one-stop shop. Need a roof repair or replacement, but holiday season has you spent? Pro Shingle has you covered. Get your free estimate today and lock in this year's price. Call now, 901-258-6503. This portion of Championship Wrestling is presented by Platinum Jewelers. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> Shop local this holiday season. Shop at Platinum Jewelers. You no, know I will, but I'm not the only one. What's up, Memphis? This is Jaron Jackson Jr. from the Grizzlies, encouraging you all to shop where I shop. Platinum Jewelers here in Memphis. 545 Perk is extended in East Memphis. The other is 9387 Poplar next to Fresh Market in Germantown. Go to my spot, Platinum Jewelers. The following contest is a singles match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing at 216 pounds, he is bad. He is Cam. Cam set for more action. I am uh, once again out here talking about how bad he is, but perhaps he's just blowing smoke. Uh, well, the baddest thing about him, in my opinion, is his attitude. No doubt about it. We saw Cam. He gave the Neon Phenomenon a run for his money. I mean, showed his his skills, but he's got another tough test here under the bright lights of Hollywood. And introducing his opponent from Queens, New York, weighing in at 220 pounds, the king of the concrete jungle, Slice Boogie. Slice Boogie ready for action here. You know, we saw him in one-on-one -on -one action a while back with Snipes where that leg gave out and and then was, you know, kind of taken under the wing and offered protection by the bodega. You know, Blake, I got to think, when you're talking about the bodega, there's definitely strength in numbers. Absolutely. Those are a mean pack of wild dogs to have behind you. So I think it's a huge advantage. And we don't see them out here right now, so you never know if they might come running out from the back at some point during the matchup. And we'll see if, if Slice needs the protection, if you will. But, you know, it works both ways because Slice offered a lot of protection for the Bodega in their bid to become United World Tag Team Champions. Yeah, I, I still just, I, I feel like the nature of that relationship still developed here. And, and also just the nature of how bad was that injury to Slice Boogie on his right leg. I mean, to, to take nothing away from Snipes because he's a great athlete, great competitor. But if it hadn't been for that injury, I'm not so sure the outcome would have been the same because we've seen just how tough Slice Boogie can be out of Queens, New York, but right now out of Texas, Cam working the wrist, isolating the arm. I'd like to see Slice start to keep attacking. There we go. Say rotate around and take that pressure off the wrist. Moving around pretty good on that leg right now, James, from my estimation. We'll see if it continues that way. Yeah. I watching very closely just to see what his mobility is like. And you are right, TK. So far, doesn't look any worse for the wear. Looks like maybe he healed up pretty quick. That's a good sign for Slice Boogie. You never want to see anybody get hurt. Thoughts on that, Blake? Maybe just, you know, maybe momentarily dislocated or something in that you know, it's hard previous to say match? The, hard to say the severity of the match, but what I will say is there's some type of prophylactic protection on the front of that leg. And something like that's a hardened weapon, man. If he kicks him in the head with that, it could be used as a weapon. All right, well, we'll you know, we'll see if that comes into play. But maybe that's part and parcel to why he's moving around so well. He's got that extra stability. And, and when you do, you know, when you are nursing an injury, when you've got something like that, a, you know, a brace, a guard or something, it's, it's, it's legal. It's in essence uh, deemed necessary as we take a good look. I actually like how Slice Boogie tried to use colors that match his gear so that it's a little harder to tell that he has some type of protection on there. It definitely makes, well, pin attempt. But it definitely makes me think that that is more injured than he wants to let us know it is. And, you know, when we saw it in that match with Snipes, it looked like the shin was really bothering him. If it is the shin, what kind of injuries could he expect there, perhaps? I would imagine that it's a shin injury. It could be shin splints. It could have been some type of contusion. It looked like it happened when he landed, which is going to make me assume it's a some type of ankle injury or potentially shin splints. If it's shin splints, how long does it take to get over something like that? 
Man, it could be a really long time. It really depends on what his training outside the ring looks like. Kind of a nagging injury, isn't it? It's like more of an, exactly, an overused chronic injury. Doesn't, doesn't seem to be affecting him right now. Slice Boogie is in control. Nobody home there. Just a little too much time in the air there and, and looking to capitalize his camp. And again, you can talk about his bad attitude all you want, but he was brought up through the ranks with the likes of Booker T, and we know just what an incredible decorated champion he has been. And he knows the fundamentals. He knows when to take advantage. And Cam right now in control. And could you imagine if we see the second consecutive upset loss by Slice, and we might right here as Cam was looking to put him away. You can see Cam's veteranness in his ability to change gears when he needs to. As soon as he gets a slight adva advantageous position on Slice, he really turns up the gas and starts putting it on him. Yeah, really making the most of that mistake by Slice Boogie. Cam now fully in control. Cam back in uh, on Halloween in October took on fellow Texan Will All Day in Memphis, Tennessee, and they in a uh, show, live event, sanctioned by the United Wrestling Network. The Halloween drive-in spooktacular, as it was, a nice neck breaker there by Cam. And again, this I mean, what is he thinking, guys? You're not gonna beat Slice Boogie I, like that. In, in one second, I talk about his upbringing, his training under Booker T, and then he goes and does something like that. You know, he might just be trying to get in Slice Boogie's head a little bit. That's somewhat of a dominating type thing. I'm just on top, Ooh. putting my, whoa, he's under the chin, and he's got the hooks in. I talk about this a lot, where he has control of the guy's body. He just released the hook. Now he does, he's not gonna be able to really cinch this choke in. Yeah, he's lost the choke now. He still has a little bit of head control. Yeah, well, and you got Slice was using the, the wrist control there to alleviate some of that pressure. And now having a little fun is there, in, 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 you can't waste any time with Slice. Big Uranagi, and again, the legs Mercy. seem to, held up, to hold up there. Into the cover goes Slice Boogie, trying to put him on ice. But only a count of two. Too One much thing, showboating from Cam. One thing Slice is very good at is landing some of these bigger level attacks. Sometimes they might be considered higher risk, but Slice does a fantastic job of successfully landing them. I'll tell you, Cam is, is agile though. Outside, inside, might break the code. That is Slice Boogie and almost put him away. And now frustration seeping in. Cam saying that was three. No, sir, not so fast. Yeah, Slice is hurt. You see him roll to the outside so he can buy himself a little bit of time to recover. Cam's right back on top of him. Yeah, Cam not wasting any time now, though. He knows that he had Slice close. And a, this would be a big victory for Cam here on Championship Wrestling. But Slice continues to battle back. You know, this is the second time I've seen Cam come in and almost seem like he has a slow starter, but he just kind of finds his. Oh. He finds the eye. That's he finds second the time eye a lot. We've seen that recently. Yeah, yeah did it to Anthony Idol. Now doing it to Slice Boogie. What, 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 what did he just do with that guard there, Blake? Slice Boogie maybe yeah, feeling that injury. Hold on now, into the roll up. I, 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 Why would he take that protection off the front of his legs? Oh, oh he, he was looking for a scissor kick. He was looking to utilize it, perhaps. Oh, big hook kick there by Slice. And now there it is, scissor kick. We'll talk about Booker T. And Slice gets it done. Here is your winner, Slice Boogie. I mean, you go to New York, you want to get a nice slice, but not like that. He, he rotated, I believe, that guard to the back of the leg. And now we take a look at it, the big scissor kick. After rotating the guard, we take a look back at the action brought to you by UnitedWrestlingShop.com. And, well, hey, so the victor goes the spoils. More action coming your way on Championship Wrestling. Uh, what is it? Banging. This is uh, what I call a banging burger. <laughs> the chilies with the onions and yeah. the queso. Boom. Queso knows where it's supposed to be, where it belongs. Queso burger. The Championship Wrestling Podcast is all new every Monday at high noon. Hosted by Dustin Starr. We'll recap all the action, look ahead at what's next, answer your questions, plus insights on the latest news. It's the Championship Wrestling Podcast on ChampionshipWrestlingMemphis.com and your favorite podcast providers. Need a roof repair or replacement, but holiday season has you spent? Pro Shingle has you covered. Get your free estimate today and lock in this year's price. Call now, 901-258-6503. Dustin's weekly wardrobe is courtesy of Suit You. They really suit you.
Welcome back. Good to see Cam back on Championship Wrestling, but it looks like the bodega's protection is already paying off for Slice Boogie. United Wrestling fans and the women's division roster have waited years for a women's championship oh, to be man. introduced, and next week, it could happen. Or not, if Jamie Iovine and Nico Marquez have anything to say about it. Dodge a fan, you can dodge a punch. Oh. 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 On. Powder off. Powder on. Powder off. What? Yes, hitting the ropes. Back. Uh, uh, Hit it with all your might. Get that spring. Oh, God. You're, you're gonna be pushed into it. Ow, oh, jeez. What, what is that? This is gonna help me with that. What? I'm losing a rate. <gasps> Champagne. Get it, get it, get it. Go up big and down big. And up big. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Clint Armstrong here with Jamie Iovine, Ruby Rays, and CC Chanel. Now guys, we've seen that Hostin and Heather are really training very rigorously for this match. So I think we're all curious, what are you guys doing to train? What have I been doing to train? What have I been doing to train? This is what I do. I am a professional wrestler. Why don't you ask her what she's been doing to train? All I've been doing is training for the past three and a half years. Of course I'm ready. All I want to do is wrestle. Clint, Nico, Clint, can't- Clint. Clint, you, you have to understand something here. I haven't met you before. You seem nice. So I'm going to give you a little scoop right here, man. A little tidbit. Everything that Nico has given me includes everything that Nico has, including this team. Dominant, powerful, competent, athletic. They, nobody, nobody in their wildest dreams can even hope to match up to these two. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The 500 Spectacular episode starts next week. It'll be the team of Ruby Rays and CC Chanel taking on Heather Monroe and Houston Body in an intergender tag team match with the future of the Women's Championship hanging in the balance. And remember, Houston Body is not a pro wrestler, and he better bring the fight. It'll be one of the biggest matches in this history. Don't miss it. And don't miss this main event. It's the Dave and Buster's match of the week with the number one contendership for the United World Tag Team titles on the line. That match is next. It's time for the Dave and Buster's Match of the Week. Watch WWE Tables, Ladders, and Chairs Oh my! Join us Sunday, December 20th. It's free. Let's head back to ringside. The following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for number one contendership for the United World Tag Team Championship. Introducing first, at a combined weight of 400 pounds, Rock God Ricky Gibson and Freak Nasty Eddie Pearl 
four minutes of heat. Switching gears to the tag team division and high stakes matchup for a potential shot at the United Wrestling Network tag team titles on the historic episode 500. And introducing their opponents, the team of Darwin Finch and Gentleman Jervis, the Friendship Farm. A little bit of a different uh, roster in the Friendship Farm, much like we saw out of, uh, out of the tag team champions at the time, SoCal Distancing. That didn't quite work out as we know the Bodega are now the reigning champions. And this matchup to, ter to uh, determine who will face them on episode 500. And it's gonna be the purveyor of razzmatazz, Gentleman Jervis, in there with Darwin Finch, a little wrinkle in the roster. Yeah, you see him uh, rocking that lab coat. Let's see if they have the right chemistry to ah. prevail against four minutes of heat here. But that's gonna be a tall order because there really are, you get hard pressed to find a tighter team than four minutes of heat. He's a bit more of a botanist though, talking about Darwin Finch. I was told that he was brought in to test the, uh, the soil of the Friendship Farm and that Sweet Robin Shaw has been demanding for him to be able to somehow in the lab uh, orchestrate cotton candy trees for the Friendship Farm, something that Darwin Finch has been unable to do thus far. The hydroponics of Darwin Finch. Wait, Friendship hey, Farm. watch it. This is a family show. So as you guys mentioned, this is Darwin Finch's first time tag teaming here on the United Wrestling Network with Gentleman Jervis. And a big thing that we always talk about is a team's mojo and ability to work together. We know Four Minutes of Heat does a fantastic job of using teamwork to get ahead. Let's see if the Friendship Farm's new, new buddy. Oh, look at this. Wow, nice nice roll twist. Up there, yes. Let's see if the Friendship Farm's able to get their mojo going. They look like they have it in their, um, when they first came out. Four, four Minutes of Heat have a lot of history with the Friendship Farm. They've These two teams have traded victories here on championship wrestling yes. in the past. And of course, we've seen a much more focused gentleman Jervis as of late inside the squared circle. We'll see if it equates the victory. And, and gentleman Jervis, it's often lost in the history of this program, but gentleman Jervis is a former United Tag Team Champion along with the Hobo. As you mentioned, Friendship Farm and Four Minutes of Heat have had a match together, but it was Sweet Robin Shaw and Gentleman Jervis that had the match, and Four Minutes of Heat really put it on Sweet Robin Shaw. Beautiful double spear there by Jervis. Talk about putting it on. Double spear by the gentleman. How do you do? Finch checks in, and he's got the acumen for an arm drag right there. Nicely done. Yeah, that's been beautiful thus far, and as I was saying, they really put it on, Formas he really put it on Sweet Robin Shaw when they had the match and really damaged his knee, but Robin Shaw's not in there this time. It's, it's Darwin Finch, and Darwin Finch is a little bit more agile, might not get stuck inside the ring, getting beat on by both members of Four Minutes of Heat. Wow, look at Finch go, long way to go for a takedown. A combustible element, you might say. Yeah, he absolutely, I mean, Blake was talking about the agility, Darwin showing it off right now in the early going. And so far, the results are good for the Friendship Farm. Finch making a smart tag to Jervis. Jervis in there with the rock god, Ricky Gibson, and maybe we're gonna see some double teaming by this incarnation of the Friendship Farm. Serving up chops. Yeah, Darwin Finch is doing a fantastic job of hurting um, Hurting Pearl, he was putting it on him to the point where Pearl kind of did, that was a beautiful tag team move. We see a Frenchie Cover. Farm has some mojo. Yeah, that double uh, takedown there, double leg sweep by the Friendship Farm and the Rock God in deep trouble here. Ricky Gibson has got to make a tag and usually double teaming is the name of the game when it comes to four minutes of heat. The antics of the Friendship Farm has taken them out of their game plan thus far, Jim. Yeah, thus far it has, but I really do believe in the four minutes of heat in terms of being a tag team specialist there is Jervis though, really working over the arm. Yeah, he is that, that focus that you talked about, TK Jervis oh. coming through in spades right now. Now normally, normally we'd, we would see that rock a slam where he tries to put his opponent down for a nap. <laughs> Took him right down into the suplex there, wasting no time. The splash now by Finch. So a little bit of a, a more of a fast pace here to, to the Friendship Farm right now, Blake. Yeah, not only that, but aggression. Like you said, usually Jervis would try and rock the guy to sleep there, but he didn't. He just slammed him down. Eddie Pearl now, freak nasty, checks in with a nasty shot right to the lower lumbar region. 
And just like that, four minutes of heat gets a couple steps ahead and they just start putting it on whoever they got trapped inside the ring. This could be the turning point. We'll see if four minutes of heat can keep the full court press when we return right after this. Pro Shingle has a deal for you. For the next 14 days, Pro Shingle will pay your insurance deductible up to $1,000 on a complete roof replacement. It's the simple choice. Go to ProShingle.com or call 901-258-6503. Recently named the best food truck in Memphis by the Memphis Flyer, New Wing Order is your main event for award-winning wings featuring more than 20 flavors, ranging from mild to scorching hot. Oh yeah, New Wing Order has options for all tastes, and if you're looking to bring that award-winning flavor to your pantry, you can now purchase bottles of their championship Memphis Buffalo Sauce by visiting NewWingOrder.com. Book them for their services or catering at NewWingOrder.com, and you can find the food truck on social media at NewWingOrder. That's what we do. Uh, what is it? Bangin'. This is uh, what I call a bangin' burger. <laughs> the chilies with the onions yeah. and the queso. Boom. Queso knows where it's supposed to be, where it belongs. Queso burger. Our next free watch party at Dave & Buster's is WWE Tables, Ladders & Chairs. Oh my! Join us Sunday, December 20th. It's free. Plus, you'll get a free game card. Dave & Buster's Wolf Chase. Welcome back, everyone. High stakes tag team matchup for a shot at the tag team championships at the 500th episode. Spectacular. But Ricky Gibson really making Darwin Finch pay the price and tag made now to Eddie Pearl. So this is what four minutes of heat really likes to do there. Oh, pin. But this is what they really like to do to their opponents. They get one of them hurt and then they keep them over on their side of the ring and just beat the guy down. I mean, they, they really do have that tag team synergy down pat. They are brothers of the road. And you know, in a year that's had so much adversity, I re you really gotta believe that they've come even closer together going up and down the roads together. Might pay dividends here in this match, this right now. Certainly looks that way. You see the body positioning. Eddie Pearl staying between Finch and the friendly corner. And not where you wanna be here. As you mentioned, where Eddie Pearl is staying between Jervis and Darwin. And what that does is it prevents Darwin from getting back to the corner and tagging out and getting out of the ring. Seeing a real mean streak from Pearl. I mean, this is what these boys are known for. They put you in their corner and they beat you down. Oh, taking the shortcut there. Allison Lee, the referee, was wise to it. But right now, the shin draped across the throat of Darwin Finch. Finch known more for his brains than his brawn, but he's got both being tested right now in this matchup. Four minutes of heat, getting very physical. Yeah, they say nerds aren't that tough, but Darwin Finch is in there showing some extreme testicular fortitude. Big shot there though, it's the one you don't see coming. Didn't know the blind tag had been made, and a close call two count. Finch has got to find a way to make a, a tag here, James. He is getting eaten up. It is survival of the fittest. For yeah, Finch. It, it is desperation time uh, for Finch right now as Eddie Pearl has that that vice on his chin there, Blake. So he does have the choke on here pretty well, but the thing he's not doing is controlling Darwin's body. So Darwin can start trying to shift his hips out to the side. Oh, he's going to sleep. He might be out right now. The arm dropped once there. The official right in there checking. He's got to intelligently defending, defend himself. You can see Gentleman Jervis beside himself over there on the corner. Knows that this might be, might see their tag team title opportunity slipping away. This has got to be a tough moment for Jervis. He has watched several of his best friends just get beat down by four minutes of heat. It's got to be another tough matchup for him. Finch now trying to fight from underneath. Desperation jawbreaker. Came up with something pretty smart there, but gets turned inside out, courtesy of the clothesline. I respect the moving. attempt. I respect the attempted offense there by Darren Finch, but I would have liked to have seen him just dive to the corner, do something drastic to try and get out, because now he's in another bad spot with Rock on him. Eddie's foot under the rope there as well. Maybe you know can always get a little leverage. Will take any trick he can. Now rear chin lock, and anybody that's smart like Finch is knows that two is greater than one. And that it's been two on one for many a minute here in this matchup. This gentleman Jervis has been made a complete non-factor. 
This is high stakes tag team action too. I mean, to become number one contender for those tag team championships. Four minutes of heat, like you said, using every trick they can to come out the victors in this. Now with the referee distracted, you see Freak Nasty just taking it to Darwin Finch. I think choking him with the tag rope there as well. And again, yes, you're right. The referee's back was term. And, but that's part of tag team wrestling, is, is being able to know when you can take advantage. Look out here, they have the makings of a little jam session. There it is, one of their signature double teams. Finch gets broken in half. They've been doing, oh, pin attempt. They've been doing some serious damage to Finch's back. Several submissions and now big slams as well as tag team moves. You gotta wonder what his what kind of shape Darwin Finch's back is in right now. Finch is getting his wings clipped. They could use a Galapagos tortoise in the form, maybe a sweet Robin Shaw right now, but that's not the case. Yeah, they don't have Robin Shaw to go to here. You just you know go back a moment now. You see another pin attempt here. Just the pain on Finch's face. Now at desperation, grabbing at Freak Nasty. He needs to make a tag. Four minutes of heat are having none of that. Darwin did a good job of looking for some type of offense there. He needed to do something. A strong offense is one of your best defense. Another pin attempt. The only chemistry that Darwin's gonna know about right now is lactic acid that's gonna be filling up his muscles because he's been in there a long time. Just a scream of pain with that shot. Now getting just blatantly choked. In four minutes, he better be careful flirting with disaster here because you don't want to get disqualified and kiss your opportunity at the title's goodbye. Yeah, friend, fr Friendship Farm, they'll take a DQ in, in this situation to move on. You can't win the championship that way, but you can become number one contender that way. You can see Eddie Pearl taunting Jervis on the side. Jervis has gotten almost a little bit emotional several times in this matchup. We've seen him even jump in there. But I, th I think that they've really isolated Finch is the weak link, perhaps, of this team. All the way up top now. Goes freak, no, nope. now uh, medium risk to low risk, but oh, look at that. Oh, little stooge tactics, guys. Finch <laughs> bailing himself out there. Four minutes of heat got too cute, and it cost him. You're gonna get hurt. Finch has gotta make a tag, though. I was thinking the same thing. Finch needs to get himself out of the ring. That was a mistake of him to try and do too much offense there. Oh, no, now right back to the eyes. This band might be breaking up. Finch has found the formula. Tag is made. In comes gentleman Jervis, who is extremely fresh and extremely fired up. Letting it all hang out here. His offense extremely oh, no, effective. No, 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 no. Oh, the official didn't see the tag. He was looking for that bunny hop drop, and now look at that. Oh, that is one sad bunny right back to the hutch. You know, if for how demoralizing for Finch. You worked so hard to make the tag. The referee doesn't see it. And now right back into another submission. How much can he sustain? He has taken so much brutal punishment in this matchup. Yeah, that is an unfortunate circumstance because this is a fantastic referee who has done a great job of officiating. So it's, it's tough to see her miss that call. Well, I mean, in, in essence, it was the right call. You, if you didn't see it, you can't call it. Four minutes heat. Remain in control. We'll be back after this. The Championship Wrestling Podcast is all new every Monday at high noon. Hosted by Dustin Starr. We'll recap all the action, look ahead at what's next, answer your questions, plus insights on the latest news. It's the Championship Wrestling Podcast on ChampionshipWrestlingMemphis.com and your favorite podcast providers. Our next free watch party at Dave & Buster's is WWE Tables, Ladders & Chairs. Oh, my! Join us Sunday, December 20th. It's free. Plus, you'll get a free game card. Dave & Buster's Wolf Chase. Championship Wrestling joins forces with Grind City Designs to bring you the all-new Championship Wrestling Shop. All styles, all sizes, featuring the legends of classic Memphis wrestling. Pickup or delivery. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Championship Wrestling. And the scientist Darwin Finch is being absolutely dissected by four minutes a year. 
Yeah, I thought that Finch had found the formula to get out of this match and get Jervis in. Referee did not see the tag. Again, can't call what you don't see. And Finch is, yeah, just being picked apart. Meeting of the minds. Playing uh, the percussion. Little drum solo. Look out here, Finch. With the uh, sling blade. And then uh, gets the BOGO. Two for the price of one there. Yeah. Finch has got to get over to the corner right now. He has a little bit of time. He's got a window, and if he can get the tag while both four minutes of heat members are down, this could really change the momentum. And last time, gentlemen, Jervis tagged in, even though that tag was nullified. Uh, eventually, we saw how fresh and how effective he was, and now, time for the encore. But it's not for four minutes of heat. It's for the gentleman who's going to work. Little ballroom dancing right into that lake sweep. Nicely done. That gentleman Jervis will not be denied right now. It's two on one with the one prevailing cover. Jervis cannot keep his back on, on Freak Nasty because if he has his back turned to Freak Nasty, when he gets up, he's going to start getting beat down just like Darwin was. There we go. There it is. Bunny hop stomp. Is that going to punch their ticket? Now the shoulders are down. We're good officiating, but that, la that split second might have been the difference. If he had secured the cover initially, might have gotten the one, two, three. A little bit of the crack in the door for four minutes of heat to stay in this matchup, but credit Jervis. I mean, what incredible offense for him. He's the fresh man, tags back in now to Darwin Finch, though. Maybe he'd call him to question that. He hasn't had that much time to rest. Uh, as long as it's a short double team, but having the back of his partner right there did Eddie Pearl. Look out now, tilt to whirl power ballad, power ballad on delivery. Four minutes of heat, get it done. Here are your winners, four minutes of heat. This instant replay is brought to you by David Busters. Don't forget, watch WWE Tables, Ladders, and Chairs with us tomorrow night. It's free. That's Dave and Buster's Wolf Chase. Wow, what a tag team struggle. Let's take a look back at the action. Get your official United Wrestling Network merchandise at unitedwrestlingshop.com. In the end, it came down to he who double teams best, double teams last, the Power Ballad, and they're on their way, not home sweet home, but to episode 500 and for a shot at the United Tag Team Titles. More great action coming your way on Championship Wrestling. I'm worried, man. What are you worried about? Goldie Boy. He's got Troop training him. You talking about Blake Fruit Troop? Look, he's got heavy hands, but that doesn't mean that we can't take the gold. You know what we need to do? Hmm. We need to get this started the old-fashioned American way. Hmm. You know what that is? Montage! We'll start with agility training. Are you ready? Who's got the most volume? Me. Yeah. Who's got the best head of hair? Ah, uh, me. Who never has a hair out of place? Me. Who's the next Heritage Champion? Me! Yeah! Yeah! Who's beautiful? I am. Who's, who's the most handsome? I am. Who's the most gorgeous face in the company? I am. Who's the next Heritage World Champion? I am. an enormous victory by four minutes of heat. They punched their ticket to the episode 500 spectacular. They will get a shot 
at the United World Tag Team titles and the Bodega. But let's take a minute to run down some of the other things we're going to see, gentlemen. It will be high stakes for sure. The television title will be on the line. And how about Jordan Clearwater finally, finally gets his hands on Richie Slade? I'm looking forward to it. You know, Jordan Clearwater has some unfinished business with Richie Slade, and I think he's going to try and finish that up here on episode 500. And the very stake of the women's division will be on the... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're, we're on the air. We're live here, pal. We're live, bro. We're on the air. Exactly. We're on the air. We got a big deal for it. That's right. We're, 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 we're doing, deep, we're doing a show here. here. They do business. I like your style. I like the way you handle yourself. You are a professional on It says Fernand Schnavitz Auto. It's on the other side, dumb dumb. Now there's the right spelling. You can uh, read now. It's a miracle. Do people call you Bimby? It's, that, it's that happened Bimby? before. Uh, what is? Come on, guys. You're not a television champion, and we are the reason that these ratings are going all the way up, and we're going all the way to the bank. <laughs> and it's coming for the big 500, 500, 500. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a second. Come on. I didn't leave the NBA Finals for this. What's going on on episode 500? That's right, Beef Candy! Todd Kenley, Richie we're on the call Slade here. Well, well, what's happening at Beef Candy? This is off the rail. Right now we've been joined by television champion Levi like Shapiro on commentary. Get out of here. What are you doing? Oh, Jimbo, Jimbo, why don't you just take Howdy Price and why don't you just do what we do best? Why don't you take the card, call the number, and make sure we do this? You know what you can do with this card? What? What's that? I'm not going to say it. We're still on TV right now. That's called a Bimby Burn right there. I like that. I'll go with that. What are they doing? Howdy, you okay? Oh, the mood just switched. What's going on? What's going on right now? What is that belt? What's that on your face right there? Hey, wait, wait. I'm not coming. I'm not coming back. Guys. I'm here in the booth. I'm trying to try do something. Get to 500 episodes. I'm feeling weak. I'm feeling weak. Wait. What are you doing? Why are you reaching in my pocket? What are you talking about? What is going on here? How you got beef candy? Oh, okay, Did he put candy in it? Candy. He just put candy in my pocket. Is that sugar? Sugar's, oh, sugar's bad for you. He doesn't know that. Sugar's bad for him. What's wrong with that? I don't like that. I'm feeling better now. I'm better now. What are you talking about? You feel I'm just telling you. I mean, I wish you'd feel... What is that, pre-workout? What are you doing clowns doing here? Where's my candy? Where did that come from? This is great. What? Oh, what? Nerds? I've oh, been called a nerd here. before. What a main event. What a day. They don't call us the fastest hour in pro wrestling for nothing. And just imagine next week is Hollywood's 500th episode Spectacular, a two-week blockbuster that we will two. have for you in full right here on Championship Wrestling presented by Pro Shingle. Part one of the 500 Spectacular will feature three big matches with championships on the line. Jordan Clearwater will finally get his hands on Richie Slade and Jordan's Heritage title will be on the line. Plus, the United TV title will be at stake. Once again, Dan Joseph has been granted a return match and will go one-on-one, -on -one, allegedly, with Levi Shapiro with Howdy Price in his corner. And in the main event, it's all on the line for women's division in the intergender match. Ruby Rays and CC Chanel versus Killer Bay, Heather Monroe, and Halston Body. If Heather and Halston win, the women's division championship will be sanctioned and become a reality. And if Ruby and CC win? It'll be a dark day in the history of the United Wrestling oh, Network. Man. And fans, that's just week one of the action. I'll see you tomorrow at Dave and Buster's for a free TLC watch party. He's Dustin. I'm Maria. So long, everybody. Happy holidays.